So my name is Tom Sykota. I'm the president and CEO of Allosource. So what we do is, if, if, you, if you have a heart in Colorado on your driver's license, I tell people at cocktail parties, we're the people who get you. So we don't do organs. Everybody understands organ donation, which is all about being on the clock and having to literally the people with the cooler where they're running to get to the, the ambulance or the helicopter. We process the human tissue. And so human tissue is bones, tendons, ligaments. We do skins for, skin for burns. And we also do stem cells, so we're, we do a lot of stem cell type processing as well. Uh, we learned about Manuel through uh, some work that was being done when he learned how to, to walk again post-surgically when he did have the procedure. And that's when the first time I met him, but then I met him face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one at a speaking presentation that he did. Um, and to have Dr. Wilkins talk about the surgical side of it and what they did, and truly the mir miracle that, that he and Dr. Brown did on the plastic surgery to build uh, Manuel his, his arm, Manuel is alive because of organ and tissue donation. Um, the tissue donation enhanced, revitalized his life. I'm not gonna say it saved his life, but it clearly enhanced his life. But the, the skin donation absolutely saved his life. And they used our skin down in Augusta when they treated him after the burn. Tissue is turned into an interesting biomaterial business. It is a business, and, and we never forget where the donor came from, but it is a business. And so we're now looking at amnion from living C-section births and how you can use amnion as a wound covering to, to cover things and patch things up. Uh, so we get placentas. Uh, I mentioned the stem cells. We can, we can capture mesenchymal adult stem cells, not embryos. Uh, the embryonic is the real controversial thing. We don't do anything embryonic. Uh, adult mesenchymal stem cells, and these mesenchymal stem cells kind of act as the conductor in the body to say to all the other cells and proteins and enzymes, hey, come here, heal this, fix this, take care of this. So it's a miracle he's alive to begin with, right? So you got to start off with that there was a greater being looking after Manuel when he got hurt. Um, and there is not a major religion in the world that doesn't promote organ tissue donation. Judaism, Catholicism, um, uh, Islam, uh, Hinduism, everybody promotes organ and tissue donation. So they're really, people believe there's, there's hidden, uh, or there's, there's, there's um, uh, reasons why you couldn't donate because of religious re reasons. Pa Pope um, Benedict, for example, is signed up as an organ and tissue donor and promoted that when he was still back in Germany and there's a bunch of papers that he's written on why organ and tissue donation is good. I think people who need organs and tissue will take organs and tissue. One of the things, um, and there's been a big push in the African American and the Hispanic Latino community over the last couple of years are because their blood, especially on organs, with tissue we can transplant tissue without having to worry about a match. So there are no rejection issues with tissue. And that's crucial to know so that, you know, we, we truly don't, you could put a, a, a bone from a, a white person into a, the, the, a, you know, a, a green person's body. It they, they doesn't really matter. But on organs, as, you, as everybody knows, that's so crucial that they match. Well, African Americans have different blood types and different cellular types than Caucasians, and those are harder to match. So people in need of an organ getting more people from their group of, of, of their, their racial group, their racial makeup to donate increases the pool of potential organs that could be transplanted back into that same group. Every donor story is tragic and I don't care whether it's somebody who just aged out, I'll call it that, got old and ended up passing away or these tragic accidental deaths that happen. Um, we had a, a, a doctor call us from Columbus, Ohio. We don't do anything in Columbus, Ohio. We don't, we don't have any donors from Columbus, Ohio. We don't really distribute a lot of tissue in Columbus, Ohio. But they were going through the list of all the tissue banks and we're at a low source. So we were like the, the first tissue bank they called. And they said, we have a little bit, a little uh, eight-year-old girl named Elizabeth. And Elizabeth has a, a very large, aggressive tumor right on her, right above her elbow. And can you get me a little humorous to replace it? And, and, and our people who took the call said, uh, no, we can't because we, we, um, we don't really recover tissue. I mean, little kids don't die. And they said, well, we really want that. And we talked about maybe getting them a smaller male bone or a different substitute. He said, I really need a humerus. And so our person took it upon herself to call the, OP, the agencies who actually do the recoveries and talk to the families. And, and literally by happenstance, two weeks later, a little eight-year-old girl in Peoria, Illinois, died of child abuse. And they 
had worked it out with the with the medical examiner and the detective um, that they could go in and take out that 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 humerus from this little eight year old girl, um, and 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 real truly heroic things because the weather was bad and they had to get it to us in a certain amount of time, and and people drove in ungodly weather. There was a safety issue there about whether they should actually do that or not. And we got the tissue and we were able to process the tissue and we sent it back out to Columbus. And Elizabeth now, who's 13 or 4, or not 13, 11 or 12, still has her right arm. And um, the kicker of the story is that, that uh, we've talked to Elizabeth's mom, and they were, you know, they were, Elizabeth will come out here at one point in time, and I, I look forward to shaking her, her hand. Um, and she became artistic. And Elizabeth's mom said she was never artistic before. She was more of an athlete. Well, as you can imagine, you know, the punchline is, the little eight-year-old girl who died was artistic. And Elizabeth's mom and the eight-year-old girl got together, eight-year-old girl's uh, uh, grandparents got together and they're now close friends from Peoria, Illinois, or Central Illinois, and, and Columbus. And, and that's, that's what we do. I mean, those are the type of stories, and those are two stories, but I could give you a hundred more donor stories and a hundred more recipient stories. We save people's lives. When you meet Manuel, he's a hero. He's an inspiration. He, he has, he has inspired all of us.